Okay, time is 7 p.m. We will call the meeting to order. Uh, and we'll start with our public hearing. And Kimberly, if you do a roll call, please. Adam Hunton. Here. Tammy Hines. Here. Andrea Corey. Here. Greg Meyer. Here. Scott Little Campus here. Here. Okay. I'd also like to welcome the visitors here this evening. Thank you for coming and participating in our meeting. As you're here. Um, um, item three for our agenda is our public hearing for the 2021-2022 school budget. All right. Well, this is a tentative budget um, that we do every year. The budget's conservative, worst case scenario. Um, the last few years have been what I call extremely variable. <laughs> you know, it's a uh, bit hard to really budget and you've got to just plan for the worst. And so historically, we've always ended up in a better financial place than what we've budgeted. We expect the same this year. That said, the key points are really on page two, lines 22. If you go down to line 22, you can see for each of the funds, the education, the operation, maintenance, step service, what we're looking at um, currently in our ed fund, it's uh, a deficit of 790,000. I will remind you my first year here, we had um, projected for a balanced budget. This was when I came in at the in July and what we found on that year was that we actually had $800,000 in the black. The next year when I did the budget, we were $700,000 in the red and we ended up 200,000 in the black. Um, so when I say these are variable years and really hard to budget for, they're variable years and very hard to budget for. So um, I'm assuming that we'll be in the same place that we are where we'll be better off. Um, if you go to page three. Actually, can I interrupt you real quick? Sure. What would cause our, that much variance in the budget from being that much in the black to what are we dealing with? Yeah, I haven't had a real good chance to dig in and, and, and look at what it is. Um, it could be some nickel and dime things where you know we didn't go on a lot of trips. Um, and whatnot, but then you also have more expenditures with the teachers that we had last year, remote teachers and stuff like that. So um, I wish I had a better answer to that question, but I've been wanting to dig into the budget more as far as looking at what got spent and why it didn't get spent, um, and I just haven't had the chance. Okay. If you go to page three, line 81 across, it gives you our fund balances. <clears throat> So even with that 790 deficit, we would look to have 6.9 million still in our ed fund. Um, and so that is in a very strong place. Columbia has been managed very well fiscally. We plan to keep it that way. Um, but this is the, the yearly budgets. Questions, comments, concerns on this? So just for perspective, that line 22, that's really only what 5% variation I mean that's it's 790,000 but we're talking about a 15 million dollar budget right that you're varying on so there's a lot of yeah you know intangibles in there that and that's why it could add up to be the field trips and a lot of other little things um a lot of other little things any other questions comments from the board Hearing none, I'll open up to the public. Any public comments or questions regarding the budget? Perfect. Lively bunch tonight. All right. With that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn from our public budget hearing. I'll make the motion. Thank you, Lisa. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Oops, we also forgot to I'll second. On the agenda, so I'm just reminding you. Okay. I'm sorry, Tyson, you second? Yeah. Thank you. All right. Uh, roll call, please. Kimberly? Adam Hunton. The plans are there. Penny High. Aye. Andrea Corey. Yes. Fred Meyer. Yes. Scott Little Campus Watson. Lisa Schumacher. Yes. Tyson Burch. Yes. All right, that concludes our budget meeting. We will now go into our regular school board meeting. I'm going to call this meeting to order. The time is 7.04. And Kimberly, if you do a roll call, please. Adam Hunter. Here. Tammy Hines. Here. Andrea Corey. Here. Greg Meyer. Still here. Lisa Schumacher. Here. Tyson Here. All right, perfect. And I'd like to again welcome our visitors from three minutes ago. So thank you for sticking with us. Long process. Um, 
At this time, I'd like to, uh, we started something last month where we began our meetings with the Pledge of Allegiance, and if you all like to join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right. Uh, item number three is our public comments and correspondence. I think we had somebody who'd like to speak this evening. Great. If you would, just. Thank you. You knew exactly what I was going to ask you, didn't you? Thank you. for your comments okay we'll move on to our consent I'm, I'm sorry anybody else want to speak all right, <laughs> all right. There, thank you all right. move on to our consent agenda mr. Crow would you like to walk us through that yeah um, not much personnel I mean you've got your minutes and you've got your financial positions and the reports and whatnot the uh, We've got Don Williamson, who's going to be retiring at the end of the 21-22 school year. That's this year. Um, we've got two employees, bus drivers, Jim Reed and Randy Bears. We're thrilled to be hiring new bus drivers. Um, and then we've got the extracurricular assignment for uh, assistant varsity baseball coach of a Derek Ruzicki. Um, and so the administration recommends the board approve the consent agenda as presented. Any questions, any comments? 
that I entertain a motion to accept the uh, consent agenda as presented? I'll make the motion. Thank you, Andrea. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Tammy. Kimberly, roll call, please. Tammy Hines? Yes. Andrea Corey? Yes. Greg Meyer? Yes. Lisa Schumacher? Yes. Price and Search? Yes. Adam Hunting? Yes. Perfect. Thank you very much. On to item uh, six is our communication reports and presentations. I think first is the enrollment. Or is that consent? No. Okay. Yeah, you have the enrollments in your in your package. It's just numbers. Okay. Any questions on enrollment? So I have, I have a question. So I looked at them and noticed that I think it was kindergarten and like ninth grade were. The, one, the two that grew this year, um, overall, uh, quite a few of them grew a handful or less. But what's a, do we have any projections for what the next few years look like? Um, yeah, I've been talking with the city about that. Um, they're assuming in the next 10 years to have like 800 new families. And so we have started to have some discussions about that. I've looked historically over the last 10, and we've held pretty much status quo. The last two years we've dropped just in total enrollment. Um, because of I think COVID, we had uh, some families that you know last year left us to go across the river where they didn't have to wear masks. Um, some of those have decided that they like it over there and they haven't moved back yet. Um, and so, really, over the last ten years, you could say that from there to there, we've dropped two hundred people. Um, but really, I see it more as a, a status because most of that dropping was in the last two. So then, um, I've been talking with the city about what. Um, lands have been plotted and what like and, and things of that nature because we're going to need to start looking at that strategically the city's going to be doing a strategic plan and so we're going to try and uh get in with those discussions as well as we as we move forward because 800 new families would put us in a position where we would not be able to house them in our current facilities yeah the good news is is financially um we're in a good place for that um, with our bonds and things of that nature. And so strategically, we're in a very good place, but we've got to decide a lot of big decisions probably in the next year or two. Yeah. That's what I was thinking, probably the next year, because the bonds are up in three? Uh, yeah, in two years, we've got most of them coming off. So I can, I've got a, a, a timeline. I'll email the board with some of those details. I think we've been starting our meetings regarding the exact same subject and kind of trying to get out in front of it and yeah. capital so. investments taking time. Exactly right. Exactly. But your observations were right on target. So, Good. any other comments or questions? All right. We'll go on to our administrative reports. Our building report. We'll start off with. All right. So we have Eagle View representing tonight. Um, I'm going to have Ms. Freeze. Uh, early childhood teacher at Eagle View kind of take the spotlight of everything I would usually <laughs> say. So um, she's just going to kind of give you a glimpse into Eagle View. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Decker. My name is Grace. As Mrs. Decker stated, I teach early childhood special education. And I just wanted to tell you some positives about Eagle View and some of the things that we have done thus far. Our first thing that we always do at the beginning of the year is a boot camp for um, the kids at our school. And it, what that is is stations set up throughout our school where the kids go to each station as a class. They travel to different stations and they learn um, how to interact with others. They learn the rules, behaviors, and some of the things that, like they go sit outside on the playground and they talk about the rules, about you know keeping your hands to yourself and how to play nicely with a friend and this and that. Um, I know one of the stations is set up near my room and it's the bus station where you know you think that'd be pretty simple but they're teaching the kids how to get on a bus appropriately you know how to sit nicely and not be so loud and you can't eat on the bus but one of the things i honestly every year i just love is that i hear the teachers every time say now hey when you get on the bus what should you say to the bus driver you know good morning now everybody forgets about the bus driver i mean good morning greet them you know, unfortunately, sometimes that's lost in our world. You know, you walk down the street and people don't say hello or greet you, that their heads down. So our teachers are doing it right, starting that out at the beginning of the year, doing things like that. 
Um, I just think it's a great skill for all these kids to have. And like I said, you're teaching them the rules, so it's easier for them at that age. Um, one of the other things as well as I teach kids with um, some of my children in my classroom are nonverbal. So I wanted to give a shout out to our special education department um, and Kristen Meisner, our speech therapist, who applied for a grant to get a communication board uh, for our outdoor playground. Um, that is an awesome tool for our nonverbal kids to go up to it and point and communicate with peers and to be included. Um, so when she did the grant, she got some money from our PTA, our Parent Teacher Association, and also our special education department paid towards that. Um, that I mean, that is just huge in our, in our rooms and our, in our building. And I also wanted to give a shout out to Songs for Soldiers as well because they also donated some money to another nonverbal student in our program. Her dad was a veteran and their insurance only covered so much of a talking device and they are very expensive. And so Kristen reached out to, um, I guess, Dustin from Songs for Soldiers and this was on a Friday and by Monday they had this talking device. And these talking devices for an individual student are very expensive. So again, that's just a shout out to Songs for Soldiers as well, thanking them. Um, Kindergarten recently did a treasure hunt outside for Pirates Day. The kids were on the playground with clipboards and their little maps and they had to walk around finding the X's by reading the map. And then on the X's were words that they had to read, so sight words, so they incorporated a lot of different techniques there. Um, first grade currently is doing an apple chain, which is the life cycle of an apple. Um, and they got that information and materials from the Monroe County Agricultural Center. Pre-K and EC, which is one of mine, or we're also doing fall themes. We're doing apples, camping and leaves, and we do a bunch of fun activities and hands-on at our age level as well. One of the activities tomorrow in my classroom is that we are making apple pies, individual apple pies, to culminate our unit on apples, and the kids then get to eat it. Um, and then we also put tents up in our reading area for the camping units, so kids get to go in there and do some reading and have some fun. So. It's off to a great year. Everybody is excited. We're just excited to be back for kids and have kids in the rooms. So that's it. Thank you. Awesome. And I was just going to share a little bit about, um, obviously last year we dealt with a lot of quarantines. Uh, exclusions is what you call it when we have to exclude from school. Uh, really excited that being able to move our desk three feet and at lunch, seating charts, we have had two at Eagle View exclusions. And um, the only other ones that we have are from daycares or if kids are quarantined because it's in their house. However, we have been able to give a lot of options to our families this year. Um, I know we're, I think we're, we were ahead of the game and kind of did it before a lot of other schools did. Working with the health department, um, parents have three options if their kids get excluded. So there's a 10 day option. So you just complete your 10 day quarantine um, there's a seven day option, so you do your seven days and on day six or seven you can do a PCR, which is a lab test. As soon as you get the results, then you can come back as long as you're not symptomatic and testing negative. And then the other one that we've started, which does is, is a little bit of work, but uh, for the uh, building and the parents, is called Test to Stay, and that was um, something that came out of ISBE and IDPH. And um, kids can test on day one, three, five, and seven. And as long as they remain non-symptomatic and negative on those four days, they, can, they don't miss a single day of school. Our parents have been amazing with this because they have to go find this test currently right now by themselves. So um, they're working hard to make sure their kids stay in school and um, keeping us up to date with their test results and where they're at and our teachers are providing uh, exclusion work if they are waiting on test results, live teaching Google Meets, packets, Google Classroom assignments, whatever kind of the parent is requesting is kind of where our teachers are going. Some parents request less, some parents request more. I have teachers teaching live all day. I have some parents that say, can I just have for the day so um, pretty cool that I think we can work with our families and then get kids in the building because we know that's what works best so 
just thought I would share that if anyone has any questions. I feel like I'm starting to be the COVID uh, queen on exclusions. <laughs> Good. All right. Thank you very much. And we're going to move on to our assistant superintendent report, Mrs. Smith. So two um, exciting things I think that I kind of wanted to share with you is um, we had met as an admin team before school started and revamped a little bit of the way we do our PLCs. Um, so two of the four weeks out of the month, um, teachers are working one week, they're working on our tier one data. So looking at those different assessments, you know, I heard a lot of information about you know, we do this testing and then what? We're losing instruction time to do this testing. So trying to make sure that we use that information to make it valuable. Um, so we're working on how to look at that, how we can incorporate it into the classrooms, but also how other subjects, um, science, social studies, the elective courses at the high school, how they can help take ownership of SAT scores at the high school and the MAP scores um, and even the AIM scores at the other buildings so kind of working on those things um, the other rotation that we're doing is we're calling it power standards um, and this is going to be kind of a longer process throughout the year but what the teachers are currently doing is looking at the Illinois state standards or the next generation science standards that they're required to teach and identifying what are the ones that Columbia is going to make a non-negotiable for every student to master by the end of that year it doesn't mean we're not going to teach all of the standards but these are ones that, because they are so essential, um, we're gonna make sure that students master those as they move on. Then once we have those identified, those will become our foundations for helping to build our curriculum maps. Um, and so I'm excited that as we kind of go through this process to be able to share with you and so you can kind of see where the different grade levels and subjects are in those power standards that we've identified. Um, so we've only had one meeting on it so far because they come to it each month. Um, but I'm excited to see how that goes. I've had a lot of great feedback, been able to get into a lot of those PLCs and hear a lot of great conversation that's happening with the teachers. Um, and I just, as a curriculum person coming in, can't be more excited at how engaged the teachers have been with doing this process. Um, so I'm excited as this project keeps going. Like I said, I'll keep you updated. Um, the other thing is when I came in, I had seen a lot of questions about, there's not a lot of PD opportunities. And so one of the things that we are doing is a monthly PD series. So for September, it was on differentiated instruction. Um, and so for the first three weeks, the teachers are provided with a short video or an article that they can watch or read. Um, and then it has some things for them to either go in their classroom and try or reflect on some lessons and they answer a reflection sheet. And then the last week, they will, um, we will come together in person and kind of um, go through what they've been learning, what they've been realizing, and then help give them some more practical strategies to go back into their classroom and use. Um, and so this, like I said, is our first month, and I am excited that we, so far, we have 24 teachers, and it's pretty evenly spread across the district, but we have 24 teachers that have completed all three weeks, and then I have an additional 18 that have done a few of the weeks, so I'm excited to see how many people show up next week for our in-person culmination one um, but so like I said each month will be a, a different topic that we're going to focus on all right any questions right. so thank you and our big dog the superintendent's report all right I just want to start off by saying it's so great to hear actual um, discussions about learning curriculum education it's a, a, a welcome return to what we're focusing on um, I'm gonna talk not so much about that and about how we're just trying to keep our doors open. And, and that's really what it comes down to right now is we've got a lot of various and interesting things happening in the state of Illinois regarding COVID. Um, shield testing for employees has begun. Tuesday night, I sat with the ROE and we collected saliva samples. I'm <laughs> a trained saliva collector for shield. You'd be amazed at the hour-long videos I watched and the questions I needed to answer to basically give somebody a tube and they collect their saliva and I have to look at it to make sure it's the right color and it's the right height, there's no bubbles and when we send it off. Fascinating. Anyway, um, right now that's being done for the employees. We did it on Tuesday. I think we've got six people. Uh, Kelton Davis from the ROE brought me the supplies today. 
So um, uh, tomorrow I'm going to start off at Eagle View and I'm going to chase down the, uh, I think, six employees, find them, have them spit in their tubes, and we will be compliant then um, for this first week. And every week those employees are going to have to test if they're not vaccinated. Um, we are going to have an executive session today, closed session at the end of this meeting to discuss the testing requirements, to discuss some of the uh, state's mandates, and really to, for me to get a better understanding of where we are with litigation or possible litigation and employee personnel issues. So um, there'll be no action after the executive session. I just need to make sure that as we're moving forward and I'm trying to keep us open, we're doing so in a correct way that the board will support. Um, because there's a lot of, as, you, as it was brought up in uh, the comments today, Thomas DeVore has made some TROs and has done some interesting things. Uh, most recently, the, the masks have been included as a type of exclusion or quarantine measure, and that brings it with the exclusions. Um, I have to say, I would be thrilled if um, we no longer had to worry about quarantining students. It's been very exciting to see how it's progressed so far in the district as um, Mrs. Becker says, we haven't had many this year. Um, between the high school and middle schools being, you know, the vaccinated people do not get quarantined or get excluded. And then the other ones trying to keep them away and all this other stuff. There's been a lot of creative solutions that we've done. Um, 15 minutes of eating lunch and then you have to change your seats to talk to your friends is, you know, creative solutions, but it is keeping the kids in school and that's really where we're at. And so that, that line of following the rules and making sure we're, that's what we're gonna be discussing today um, in closed session. Other than that, it's been a good year in, in, in as much as Last year at this time, we were talking about coming back to, to remote and hybrid, you know. Um, we're in, we're in session, we're in session all day. We actually have teachers involved in PD. We've got the, the normal trainings that are going on at the schools. It's, it's just, it's, it's exciting and I wanna just make sure that this glass in front of us is seen half full because it's, it, we're getting there. That's it. Oh, I have a question. Yes, so sir. In a previous meeting, we approved the test to stay program within the school. Yeah. Um, where are we at with that? Because I believe the health department was supposed to have a play in that, but they, that way we didn't have the burden on the parents. Right now, um, we have, I've got maybe 50 tests in my office, okay? And I've got to do the employees. Uh, next week, I'm hoping to send out an email to the parents. Um, basically what happened is the ROE set up almost a clinic where the people that don't want to be vaccinated and needed to be tested have to sign up and give permission for their medical records to go through this process. Otherwise they have to go off and get their own tests through their own medical systems. Um, and so we're doing the employees through that. So what's going to happen is, is we will send out an email to all parents and any parent that would want to possibly test to stay for their kid to stay needs to fill out this form. Um, it's a Google Drive. Then they get uploaded into this point-and-click system, which is the, uh, the medical thing. So I, I, I sit there and I say, what's your birth date? And I find your, your name based on your birth date. And then I give you your tube. You fill up the tube. I scan the tube. It goes with your name. And, and we go there. Um, the parents are going to need their students to be in that system for tests to stay. I'm assuming a lot of parents will sign up for that. I'm hoping a lot of parents will sign up for that just on the safe side. Um, on the other side, so let's say that your child, you know, you didn't sign up for it and your child's now quarantined and you want them to test to stay. I'll have to take a moment and you'll have to uh, sign them up then and I'll get them entered into the system and we can do that. It's just going to take more time. But next week we're looking to send out the email. What I need to do first though is make sure that the ROE can get me enough supplies. Um, right now I don't have enough, I don't think, to do a, a, a full one, three, five, and seven for the kids that are testing to stay uh, and the employees. And so um, I need more supplies. And so that's gonna just be a process of, of, of the supply chain getting in there. And so logistically, I'm not opening it up to the students until we've got that for sure. 
but I'm thinking next week or the week after. So it's on the it's on the horizon. It's yeah. By the end of this month, if I'm not telling you that we're testing kids in the schools next board meeting, I'm wrong. We need to correct that. Fair enough. Yeah. So how are some schools not able to get these tests? Are are we just doing a bang up job and getting this one of the things that was really neat? It, it's um. An individual school that's asking isn't leveraging the enough stuff. If he comes there, and, and, and what Kelton did was, was wonderful because we'd still be waiting for the test. A lot of schools aren't getting them. But he came in and said, as an ROE, I want to pilot this program. And he talked with the people at the state, and he got us the tests. And so now what he's got to do is get enough for every school to be given their allotted amounts. But, uh, but yeah, I've got a, a scanner for the barcode that hooks up to the my computer, and I can't speak highly enough of what the ROE has done for that. Any other questions? Comments? All right, perfect. Thank you very much. On to our items for action. Uh, first item is the approval of the 2021 to 2022 school budget. Yeah, we talked about it. It is projecting a deficit spending, but um, as I said, it's a variable year and this is the worst case scenario. The administration would recommend that you approve the budget as presented. Any discussion? Questions? Concerns? Anybody brave enough to make a motion to approve the budget as presented? I'll make the motion. Thank you. That was easy. All right, second? I'll second. Tammy? Roll call, please, Kim. Andrew Corey? Yes. Greg Meyer? Yes. Scott Little Panthers? Absent. Lisa Schumacher? Yes. Tyson Sir? Yes. Adam Hemkin? Aye. Tammy Hines? Yes. Right, perfect. Motion approves unanimously. Item B is the approval of the administration and teacher salary and benefit report. What you have in front of you is a um, document that basically outlines the salaries and benefits for teachers and administrators. Um, it is what we've agreed to contractually for everyone, and so um, we will post it as soon as it's approved. The administration recommends the board approves the report as presented. Questions, comments, concerns? Uh, my only comment would be, uh, so, you know, some of the teachers that have moved on and left, I mean, their salaries are still included in here. I have to assume that those are no, no longer part of the budget. Right. Correct? That yeah. is correct. So there's... This is one year in the rears, I believe. Okay. Yeah, for sure. So... Yep, that's it. Good question. Any other comments? Questions? So there's... A few that are not either one or a partial, so like a 0.9 or a 0.98 FTE, what constitutes being point something or point oh something off of it? Full so FTE? we've got some yeah. some teachers that teach a, a few classes, like at the middle school, we've got some teachers that teach three sections of classes and then they're an aide for the rest of the day. And so they would be, um, if the middle school's got, I think, let me do four sections because I think they've got eight periods. So if they teach four sections, they would be a 0.5 FTE. And so based on the number of sections that they teach is the um, their full full time equivalent. Sorry. It depends on when they're hired during the year as well, or if they have any training or up for any um, time frame. Sometimes it affects that. Um, okay, so that that would. That's probably the most likely scenario if it's, you know, a, yeah. If you've got a specific a few of a percent, yeah. I was just like, how do you have, how are you point, you know, point nine something point of nine FTE eight. or yeah. for, a, one for, or for <laughs> TRS reportings? If you hire, typically, if you hire someone brand new after Thanksgiving, they don't get a year of service credit for the for the things because they're not a full time. Well, yeah, none of these are that that scenario. I, I've I've known these names to be around for quite a while, okay. so. I was just wondering how that happens, that you're less than a tenth of a yeah, FTE away from being full-time. Tomorrow, if you give me the specific name on the phone, I'll explain. Uh, I, that's okay. I just wanted to conceptually understand it. If, it, if, there, are, if there are absences that would constitute a, a reduction, that's most likely so. Questions? Anything else? Well, with that, I'd entertain a motion to approve the administrator and teacher salary and benefits reports. I'll 
Thank you, Lisa. Do I have a second? A second. Thank you, Tammy. Can we roll call, please? Greg Meyer? Yes. Lisa Schumacher? Yes. Tracy Sir? Yes. Adam Pumpkin? Yes. Tammy Meyer? Yes. Henry Ford? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Letter C is the appointment our IASB delegate. Yeah, so at the November conference, that's when the IASB has their yearly voting on um, policies, uh, resolutions, things of that nature. Um, we do it every year. Historically, the secretary has served as the board's delegate. So next month, we will actually be discussing what's, um, what's being voted on, what resolutions and what action items are being voted on. Uh, and so the recommendation is that we stay with the secretary as our delegate. And so uh, Ms. Hines would be the one that would go to that meeting. It's about an hour. I think it's on Friday or Saturday. Um, I'd have to get you the schedule, but you'd then vote for the board. And your role would then be to, you know, if, if the board consensus is that, yes, we do want to do this, then you need to vote yes, regardless of your own individual. Would anybody like to volunteer, Tammy, and make a motion? I'll make a motion. All right, we have a motion to volunteer, Tammy, for our ISB delegate. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Tyson. Roll call, please. Mrs. Schumacher? Yes. Tyson, sir? Yes. Adam Hunkin? Yes. Tammy Hyde? Yes. Andrew Corey? Yes. Yes. I guess I should ask you if you accepted the nomination, but I wasn't. Sure. There. Usually it's the guy that doesn't show up to the meeting and gets uh, <laughs> Oh, that was a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> just saying. Well, now you say it. <laughs> just it's common. Eddie didn't even call in either. <laughs> he emailed me, so he, he did tell me he was able to make it. All right, perfect. Well, thank you for volunteering, Tammy. My pleasure. Uh, letter D is the approval of the state maintenance grant. Yeah, and this came out a few weeks ago. The The state did a maintenance grant, and basically it's uh, $50,000 the state will pay you if you do a project that you're spending $50,000 on. And so um, talking with Kurt and looking at what we have as far as things that need to be done, we came up with this list of electrical work at the high school. Um, Brick Partnership was brought in from our architects and they looked at the uh, our situations they walked around with kurt the first item additional kitchen panel so right now the kitchen at the high school the the electrical panel is full it needs an additional panel we're always blowing fuses and things of that nature the energy is already the electric's already into the transformer in the building it just needs a uh, another panel added to do that would be an estimate of twenty nine thousand dollars um, so we would recommend that we do that one. Item two is to also put an additional panel to serve the ag lab and the wood shops, okay? Again, we've got no more room for any more electrical work. Adding these panels would allow us to bring in other tools and whatnot into those areas. The estimated one for that is 41,000. It's farther away from where the uh, main transformer is, and so it's really the running of the wire that's so expensive. I would recommend we do that one as well. Those two together bring us over the $50,000 mark, and so we would be spending that, and um, the, the state would start to match the dollars at that point, anything above that. Um, so add branch circuit class space in the classrooms. There's two options on this one. The first option was to replace the panels on the first and second floors, and so basically what you'd be doing is you'd be moving from a 42-pole panel to an 84-pole panel. So you'd have a lot more places to put the circuits. The downside of the $41,000 um, option is that your, our capacity remains the same. And so if we've got so many units of electricity there and we add all these extra units, we're still pulling it from the same pipe. And so we've got more places to plug in. We're, we're, we need a better understanding of where we are with capacity. The other option is to run new wires along with the new panels for the first and second floor. 
with the running of wires you get an extremely large jump in price as you can see that option is two hundred and seventeen thousand dollars um, that one shocked me that one caused a, a, a meeting that I had yesterday with the architects I'm like why is it that different that that large of a jump um, and, and they basically said it's because you're running wires it's, it's running wires all the way down to the east wing and to the west wing okay so it'd be both sides of those teachers wings top and bottom um, my recommendation is that we approve option one with the understanding that um, later on we can addri address the capacity issues if need be but this would at least allow us to, to add more panels and get us over that fifty thousand dollar mark the panels would then be there if we have to run wires later on as we do this in a piecemeal fashion um, item fours is replacing all the existing luminaries um, this would be I, I asked about this one it's four hundred and ten thousand dollars to replace all the light basically that's a luminary replace that with something that doesn't have a ballast and is LED compliant um, looking at about 410,000 at this point in time I don't think that that is worthwhile for us to do at the high school uh, and the same with the ele the the bringing power to the west wing the west wing doesn't have an elevator uh, Brian and I would love to see an elevator on that west wing um, I was thinking that we would be able to get in into health life safety dollars um, been told by our architects no because we do have an elevator on the other wing we can move a classroom and so my dream of getting an elevator on that side is kind of but still there we need a way we need it we just not right now so right now the recommendation would be to go with item one for 29,000 item two for 41,000 and item one of or item three option one for 41,000 um, and we would pay for basically half of it and the other half would be paid for by the state now are these actual bids or are these estimations no these are our... estimations from the architect so what we would have to do is if this gets approved tonight i will fill out the form it needs to be submitted in, by the end of this month into the state to the grant things whenever they do these um, maintenance grants they always give it to you last minute and then give you a quick turnaround so you've got to be kind of on your toes for them um, so what we would do is we would write it and then once we get it then we'd have to do the bid specs go out to bid get the prices in um, we might not hit the fifty thousand dollar cost total you know these might be too high but if we spend if it ends up being eighty thousand dollars we'll spend forty and the state will spend forty because it's 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 matching if you understand if we can get it to a hundred thousand dollars then we spend 50 and we get hundred thousand dollars worth of work if it's 110 we pay 60 they pay 50. does that make sense mm -hmm. i see the wheels turning what are you thinking i just wonder about the capacity so do we know what capacity on that one we're just increasing the distribution on the panel obviously more circuits but are we at capacity are we near capacity or do we have any idea we do not have any idea you talking oh. item three option one that yeah. is item three option one yeah the uh, I'm wondering the same thing what's if it's just adding more re receptacle points but we're not actually adding any true capacity um, but we might not need it either though so it's you know, right that's that was, that was gonna be my following question what's the actual need I understand there's opportunity to do so but what's the driving the need, need is, is we could we, we could use more outlets we could use more plugs we can use more um, with with more and more people using technology we're running out of out of space to run more things onto those circuits well but if they're going to be put over the same existing locations you still can't put more you can't put more outlets on the circuit with the, with the same wire it would be right. it, they're going to double the circuits basically double so. the circuits but but the capacity coming to the box would still be the same okay. and that's where the 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 I don't know how to answer that question as far as whether or not we're going to be lower on capacity but if we have the bigger boxes and everything works out great and if not then we're going to need to go out to bid and look at for someone to to do the um the wiring because all it would be then is adding the additional wires because we've already got the boxes doing the boxes and the wires now we're we're spending more money than i think we need to 
when we, you know, if the if it, if the state was t saying we're matching it up to a higher amount than fifty thousand, I, I I get it, but it's not a the cost differential is not there for me because we can do the wires later, if that makes sense. That's true. I mean, it, 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 I mean, if you'd rather do the 217000 we could bid that one out, too, because, again, those numbers are high. Architects always, it's kind of like a projected budget. Well, that's with the 50. It's, it's costing double what it really should, so by the time we get it, we're paying what we should. What we could do is we write the grant for the 217 and then we see what the bids are, and we ask for an alternate bid on that. It would give us time to do the capacity check as well. But you're already over, you're already over uh, 100, so... You're 41, 41, or 29, so. Yeah. So, so I, I want to, um, I guess, unpack a little bit of what the, the item five. Um, just trying to look forward a little bit and do a little planning. I mean, we've already talked about the fact that in a couple of years, we, our schools are, are projected to grow in size, and you know, to me, this is an this is an access for those without disability, for those with disabilities making it easier instead of someone who has a mobility issue having to go down another wing. If we want to plan at, for a future yeah. capability, if but planning for a future capability, when we do do a, a the the most the most economical way to add an elevator to that building would be to do um, they make a uh, pre-built elevators, and and you can put them in place, and they would be at the end of the hall. So when you drive in and you see the Columbia sign on that on that wall right there, see that door on that picture, you could have a um, a staircase and an elevator in a glassed box on the outside of that hall, uh, on the outside of that building, and that would be your access then for that thing. So that top window, which is rather rough and, and could use some insulation, that would be your second floor entrance way into the high school. So that would be the the best way to do that. And if we do that, um, electricity to the to the elevator wouldn't necessarily need to come from inside the building there might be a pole across the street that we can just tap into as well to make it to get the electricity there for much less than the 33,000 so I get what you're saying about planning for the future but um, we've already kind of talked about that and said when well when we do add that we might be able to find a better place to add it but also this is a maintenance grant so I'm not sure that's really an improvement not really maintenance so I'm not sure that would qualify for the grant I think you might have a little more chance of rejection if we went that option rather. So what's the fire alarm statement in there about then? Oh, that would be that in a, in a, in a, when you do an, uh, an elevator, you need to make sure you've got the fire alarm and, uh, and it's gotta be a talking one and all that other stuff for the, for the new codes of discussion or questions for my own clarity where did we land we, we, we still with item one and item two we're fine with I get that item three are we going to go with option two and then have an alternate bid or do you think option one and then do the wires later if we need more capacity so I'll tell you where I'm at on that is these are to me this is an opportunity this wasn't driven by previously stated need that was brought to the board. So spending extra for the sake of spending versus taking an opportunity to do some real cost savings or cost sharing, um, I would not be in favor of option two. Okay. And that's kind of where I landed as well. I just wanted to make sure I understood what our discussion was. So we're looking at item one, item two, and option one of item three which would get us real close to the $100,000 mark, which means we're getting... 111. What's that? 111. 111. The bids will probably come in lower than that, though, so right. um, we'd be getting a half-off sale on it. It's on sale. <laughs> the recommendation, uh, my recommendation would be to approve <coughs> those three options as we discussed. Uh, and I would like to see something actually stating what the, the need is, what the, the need driving the, the recommendation. I mean, because it's, you know, we've talked a little bit about it, but 
you know, something for the file would be nice. I believe these are items that Kurt Steve came up with that yeah the the so. the kitchen is the big one is as is the um the 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 ag labs and the wood shop needs um those are the ones that were really feeling it and then the classroom space was just classrooms always need more space but they've not it's not been an issue as it is in the in the in the industrial arts center for obvious reasons but anyone else Right. Would anybody like to take Mr. Grody's recommendation and make a motion to approve I item ones, two, and three with option one? So I'm I'll make that motion. Oh, thank you, Adam. Is there a second? I'll make the second. Oh, Tammy, thank you. Roll call, please, Kim. Yes. 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 Very Yes. Greg Meyer? Yes. Lisa Schumacher? Yes. Motion passing that, Thank you. We always like free money, so that's great. All right, uh, letter E is the approval of the 2021 to 2022 dual credit partnership agreement between Southern Illinois College and Columbia CUSD4. As we currently have those classes with students earning the college credit, it's my recommendation that we approve it. This is just an ongoing thing that we've done yeah. after year. Yeah, it allows the dual credits for the for swing. Okay. Any questions, discussion? How many classes or how many of those courses do we currently have as a, in our partner, in our agreement, approximately? I'm thinking five. There's physics, German, or is German through the other? First through SLU, so political science is that through SWIC? Yeah, I can get you a list. Yeah, not enough. <laughs> Any other discussion or questions? Is that an entertain a motion to approve the 2021 2022 dual credit partnership agreement between Southern Illinois. College in Columbia, CS, CUSD4. I'll, I'll make, make the motion. All right, she beat you out. Sorry, Tyson. Right. That works. All right, second? I'll second. There you go. All right, roll call, please. Adam Hansen? Aye. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Greg Meyer? Yes. Lisa Schumacher? Yes. Tyson Serge? Yes. All right, letter F is the approval of fiscal year 22 authorized representative for the CCSI Board of Control. Brian Reeves as principal of the high school is um, or has been the uh, representative. My recommendation is that we continue with Brian Reeves as principal of the high school to be the representative. Um, and since if he can't make it, I would be the alternative. I can tell you that he's not missed a meeting, so I'm comfortable being the alternate. Um, safe bet, eh? It's a safe bet, yes. Uh, but we do send kids to CCSI. It's a good program, so I would. So, because I come from the government and we're a world of acronyms, I would ask that we don't use acronyms that may not be known to the public. So CCSI is Career Center of Southern Illinois. Yes. I don't. I don't know that good idea. those in the audience who are listening would be able to make that connection instinctively. So. Yeah. My apologies. And if you would have asked me, what does CCSI stand for? I probably would have come up with Career Center of Southern Illinois. <laughs> You're on that page. I'm not on that page, but yeah. Career Center of Southern Illinois. AKA Back Center. What's that? Right. AKA Back Center. That's what yeah. I call it in the days. Back. 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 Yeah. Okay. I don't know if you would know this, but do you know if there's been an increase in the number of kids starting to go out there? Um, I don't think that there's been an increase. Okay. I think we're pretty much pretty level there. I know that there's been, um, I've had some discussions with uh, various community members. They do some new programs out there. They do. Um, it just, it's just, it's a matter of scheduling and, and time. But yeah. Any other questions or comments? Right. With that, I'd entertain a motion to, Mr. Reeves is not here, so if somebody would like to volunteer him for 
to be our authorized representative for fiscal year 22 for the Career Center of Southern Illinois Board of Control. Make a motion. Thank you, Lisa. Are you a second? I'll second. Anyway, thank you. Roll call, please. Yes. Yes. Greg Yes. 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 Before we go on, I will say that I got a text message um, saying that 13 SWIC classes. I will get you the list of what specifically those 13 entail, but uh, okay. 13. That's, that's good. Yep. Much better than five. Yeah. yeah. I love all of them. Under promise and over deliver. If you know. There you go. Perfect. Well, that control that concludes our items for action. Uh, item seven on our agenda is discussion items for individual board member comments or concerns. Anybody have anything tonight? I wanted to um, ask something. Uh, last school year, we did a meet and greet before one of the school board meetings of all the new faculty that we hired. Um, is that by chance something that we could do again? Certainly. Just so you can get a face with the name. And we can get that on our calendar as a yearly event. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. I don't remember doing that, but yeah. It was, you weren't here. Ah, ah. that's why. <laughs> prior to your. Hence, hence my lack of memory. No wonder he didn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we had, we had a lot that year, so we met down in the library. Okay. At the media center first, and then came up here, but I don't feel like we had that many as we did the last school year, this year. Yeah, but how many know, new hires did we have this year? It was? Um, we had six certified staff. Okay. So, still a number. Anyone else? So what are, what are the upcoming school events? I know one of the previous board meetings we talked about wanting to do what we could to support even having homecoming, whether it's outside or whatever we can do to support that. Um, but I, I'm not on like the high school emails or the grade school. I'm on the middle school because of my child. But just what are what are the next upcoming school? Homecoming events? is the big one at the high school. Homecoming will be um, downtown Main Street. The the city has passed that. Mm -hmm. um, that's the weekend of the 16th. 16th. October 16th. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. Is doing a movie night. Um, that wasn't set yet, though, but it's in October. October 22nd. Oh, did they say October 22nd? I believe so, yeah. They're trying to do an outside movie night. And then they're also doing their Christmas craft again. I didn't put that in the calendar yet, but it's in December. <laughs> <laughs> the homecoming parade is October 13th. The, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. the parade's earlier in the week, so that's on the 13th. Are they still doing the bonfire and the, those activities as they have in the past, or is it just the parade? I don't know. This is going to be my first real year of experiencing the, um, the, the things of homecoming. Last year they did some dress up, clo clothes, and things of that nature. Right, spirit oh, lamps. Spirit spirit lamps. Mm -hmm. If you haven't seen the reveal video yet, it's on social it's, media. It's they very, did a fantastic yeah, job. It, it's a very video good video of the homecoming. Yeah, the about homecoming on social media. <laughs> yeah, that was neat. We'll get it sent to you. It's a really cool <laughs> video. We'll send you a link to the video. Anyone else? Well, thank you. Um, last item is the board's president prerogative. Um, I just like to commend the district. Um, I'm, I'm very pleased with how things are going. Um, I think we're really on the cutting edge of we're, we're kind of leading. Um, on all these fronts, I mean, we're taking pre um, proactive action in advance. Uh, we're minimizing our quarantine. We're being very good on the three-foot separation. Um, you've done a great job in your scheduling and allowing these kids to continue school, which is by far the most important thing. They, we need these kids in the classroom. Um, really proud of you guys at Eagle View, the items that your guys are doing. Um, very, uh, I mean, it, it just shows that why people move to this area and what we're delivering so it, I appreciate you guys coming in and sharing all that with us because a lot of people just don't know 
how good they really have it here. So, so anyway, um, and again, I, I want to echo uh, Mr. Grody's response or remarks about the ROE. And I know a lot of schools are unable to get these tests and they're, they're in a standstill because they're mandated to do it, but they can't get the tests or they're kind of rock between a hard place and, and uh, we're ahead of that game. So everybody's working together and uh, I'm, I'm just very proud of our entire district. So. Now the last item is executive session, so we need to have a motion to adjourn into executive session, I believe. For the oh, I'm sorry, litigation yes. and for um, the purposes, personnel. I think we have to read this. So yeah. we're gonna go into executive session for the purposes of appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of a specific employees of the public body or legal counsel for the public body including hearing testimony on a complaint lodged against an employee of the public body or against the legal counsel for the public body to determine its validity. I'll make the motion. Tammy, and a second. I'll second. Thank you, Lisa. Roll call, please. Andrew Horn? Yes. Frank Meyer? Yes. Lisa Tamacher? Yes. Tyson Sir? Yes. Aaron Hunter? Yes. Tammy Knight? Yes. All right, we are going to go into executive session, which of course I got to have you guys depart us. So again, appreciate you coming in. I'm sorry we can't take.
are back in regular session. We don't have any further items for action. And with that, I entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make that one. Thank you, Adam. Second. I'll second. In honor of Scott, I'll so moved. <laughs> Tumpkin? Yes. Hines? Yes. Corey? Yes. Meyer? Yes. Schumacher? Yes. Search? Yes. That concludes our meeting at 845. Thank you all for joining. Mm -hmm.